So in today's video, we are fixing probably what is the most common fault of them all in the Golsing. And I've got a drill for you at the end of the video, which has never failed to work when I've used it with my clients. So what do you think it is? The most common fault in the golf swing? Well, we're gonna to come to that in a moment. It'd be interesting to see whether you were correct. But before we get started, I'd love you to just get involved with this video. Once you've watched it, if it did help you, I'd love you to give it a thumbs up. I'd love you to get involved with the comments box down below. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love you to consider subscribing. There is a subscription link down below. Just click that and also click the little bell icon as well. That just means you'll be notified when I do release a new video and you won't miss any of the content, which I think can really help you play your best golf. So what is the fault? What did you guess? Well, we're talking about the over the top move. It is so common. I've coached for a number of years now and it is still the fault that just comes through the door over and over and over. Now, we're not really gonna dive too much into why it happens, but we're gonna give you three drills which I know can absolutely help you fix these. And like I said at the start, this final drill, at the end of the video, I've never seen this fail. It's brilliant and there'll be a reason why that's the case in the moment. So before we go into those three drills, what is the over the top? Well, Effectively, it's when the golfer might make a pretty nice shaped backswing, but the hands, the arms, the club shaft and the club head move outward far too soon in the downswing. The first movement is one where they move out in front of me and it's called over the top. From here, we are pretty much always gonna have the club swinging out to win and we just get an array of shots from there, loss of distance, poor strikes. And there's a very good chance that either you make that move or you know someone who makes that move. So we're going to use a couple of little things. Now, I use this impact bag. Um, it's, it's something I use daily by coaching. I appreciate that you're not going to have something like this, but you can just get a little bit creative. Effectively, it's just a big bag and it's stuffed with, it's actually stuffed with curtains. So you need to get a little creative, maybe a, an old cushion or something you can make similar to this. But I'd advise you to try and do something because it's absolutely brilliant to use this. Now, it's going to take me a couple of seconds just to make sure I've got that set up in the right way. Make sure I've got it where I need it to. So round about there, I reckon would be absolutely fine. Okay, so I've got my bag set. Maybe just over a foot behind my trail foot and it's pretty much in line with my toes as well. So this first little exercise is really to change the initial direction of the golf club. What we've said is that from the top, we want that club to be moving outward. Well, we sorry, don't, but that's what the golfer who makes this move does. They have that club moving too much out this way. What I'd love you to do is make some back swings. You can set it up to ball if you like, so it feels a little bit more like a, a golf swing, up to the top. And I want you to feel like you are moving towards the target with your hips. So you'll see how there is some lateral movement towards the target. As you do that, with a fair bit of force, I want you to work that club straight into that back. So you can see that my club has obviously collided with the back. So what would that look like? Well, it would look up to the top and it would look like this. Okay, up to the top, and it'll look like this. Oh, got my club stuck in the handle. Okay, up to the top, and down. Up to the top, and down. And this is something I'll have you do for a few minutes. It might be something you do, you know, every other day for a few weeks. But you can probably see straight away what it's actually doing. Because I'm trying to hit that bag, it's really eliminating this movement. Because as soon as I make this movement, then I can kind of no longer hit the bag. It's a big target, which is good. It doesn't feel like I'm gonna miss it. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create this movement where I shift my weight towards the target. All the best players do that. And the hands, the arms, and the club begin to work a little bit more downwards. And effectively, if we can get the arms and the club to work a little bit more downwards, we're eliminating that over the top move. It's a brilliant drill. And it's a really good drill because there's no ball being hit. So it allows you to really focus on the movement you're trying to make. It gets you to sort of feel that movement without the pressure of having to hit a shot and, uh, and having a, a result. Next little exercise. This one is the kind of the follow on from that. We take this impact bag, we place it just in front of the peg where my ball would be. Now, I'm hoping you can see here, but the edge of this bag is pretty much at 90 degrees to where I'm trying to go. We're actually gonna to start to just angle it so the back of that bag starts to feel like it's angled more at the right-hand side of the range, and hopefully you can see that there. Now, if I make my 
over the top movement. When I collide with that bag, because my club is moving this in this out to win fashion, the bag will always spin. It's always going to have that spinning movement. Now, because it's angled slightly out to the right, even if I actually deliver my club on a very neutral path, it's still going to have some rotation in it. You can see that's kind of a clockwise rotation. The goal here, and again, this should be done no ball, and you can do this at home or wherever you've got some space, is once that bag is angled a little bit up the right-hand side, is to try and recognise that movement that we made in the first drill, where the weight goes forward and the arms come down, and we start to be able to hit the bag, and we start to be able to move that bag without it spinning. And effectively, if we can move that bag without it spinning, that would suggest that the golf club is traveling in the same direction as the sort of bag is angled, which in this case is very much up the right hand side. So it's great feedback and it's great feedback without a golf ball. And very often when we're looking to change a movement within a golf swing, taking the ball away is a great starting point because it allows us to free up a little bit and it allows us to make some better movements without the pressure of, okay, there's going to be a ball being hit and it's going to fly somewhere and it's possibly going to be a poor shot. So these two drills together or done you know one after the other are brilliant for starting to get us to deliver the club in a much much better fashion and remove that over the top move so let's move on to the final drill and this one trust me is brilliant and this will absolutely fix it so once you've done drills one and drills two you're pretty much ready to move on to drill three now what is the most powerful thing in the golfing what controls the golfing more than anything else the golf ball. The golf ball controls everything. Let me explain what I mean. Imagine I've got, you will have to use your imagination here, imagine I've got a perfect golf swing. Not that there is one out there, but let's say I've got a perfect golf swing. And the ball goes nice and straight. Now if I was to take an address to hit this golf ball and you move the golf ball so it was over there. I mean it's two and a half, three feet further forward. I'm not sure why you would do that. But if you ask me to make a golf swing, I would not repeat my perfect golf swing because my perfect golf swing would only work when the ball was positioned on that peg. If you put the ball there, what I would do is my instinctive kind of sporting ability, if you like, would kick in and I would do something incredibly different just to make contact with that ball because it's somewhere different. So what we're kind of saying here is if we move where the ball is relative to you, your golf swing will have to change, otherwise you'll miss the golf ball. And trust me, you won't miss the golf ball because your brain will not let you miss that golf ball. So once we start to move the ball around in our stance, we can start to influence what the golf club does. It's really powerful. So watch what happens if I was to take my address and move that golf ball further forward in my stance. So it's way up off that front foot, almost where a driver would be. Well, the only way I can really hit that golf ball would be to make this movement here. Now, what do we recognize that movement as? Well, that's the over the top movement that we're trying to get rid of. So ball forward, I'm not gonna use that, that's gonna be worse. So it makes sense therefore that we're gonna go ball back. So what I would do is I'd take my address to this golf ball and I'm gonna have this golf ball way, way back off this back heel. Now you can play around a little bit with how far it goes back. The further it goes back, the more effective your golf swing will change, but you just have to experiment a little bit. I would say off that heel is great. Now, if I make my normal golf swing, I'm probably going to completely top that golf ball because the club wants to bottom out around about here. So how I would make contact with that golf ball is I would have to make that movement where the club and the arms work a little bit more down and they stay a little bit more behind me. Because look what happens when I do that. Well, I can actually hit the ground somewhere outside of my back foot. And where would the club be traveling as I did that? Well, it would be traveling way, way, way out to the right-hand side. And we know the over the top is when that club travels out to in. It travels from the outside to the inside of the ball. So if you were to put the ball back in your stance and your sole objective was to make solid contact, what I can guarantee you, you would do is you'd go up to the top and your arms would start to move more downwards and the club head would start to move on a more in to out path. I guarantee you, if you don't do that, you'll miss the ball and you're not going to do that. So if I was to set up aiming down this fairway, this ball is not going to go down this fairway and you'll see the ball start off 
way, way to the right, but that's absolutely fine. Okay, and hopefully you can see that ball flight. It started way up the right, had that curve back to the left. I could absolutely not have hit that shot with an over the top out to move. So that ball flight tells me it was more into out. And the reason it was into out is because that ball was so far back, I had to change my swing, swing shape to make contact and that is exactly why moving the ball around your stance is so powerful and that's why that drill as i said at the start has never failed to work when i've used it with the students right really really hope that video was helpful to you and there's some information there you can apply to your game like we said right at the start if you did enjoy that video please give it a thumbs up please give it a like and also comment below we'd love to hear your thoughts thanks for watching we'll hopefully see you back here again very very soon